Hi everyone. Today we're going to read chapters 56 and 57 of The Wild Robot. Chapter 56, The New Lodges. The second lodge would have to be bigger than the first if it was going to fit Broadfoot, the bull moose. He was a towering hulk of an animal and had a thick coat of fur, but even he was struggling with the frigid temperatures. Broadfoot lived on the other side of the pond in a dense section of the forest that was home to many animals, most of whom were in desperate need of a good thaw. The winter days were short, so there was no time to waste, and rather than walking all the way around the pond, Roz tested its frozen surfaces to see if it was safe to cross. She threw a heavy rock high in the air and watched it bounce off the hard ice. Then she carefully walked over the ice into the forest on the other side, where she found Broadfoot waiting for her. The moose quietly led the robot to the clearing in the trees where the new lodge would go. Then Roz made a fire and watched as cold creatures began crawling out of the shadows. Do not worry, the robot said to the growing crowd, steam puffing from their nose, noses. You will all be warm soon, but I need your help. Roz asked the animals to collect anything useful they could find. Large stones, strong branches, chunks of frozen mud. With the robot's building expertise and the small army of helpers, the construction of the second lodge didn't take long. The animals happily agreed to the robot's truce, and they then they shuffled into the warm wooden dome. If you keep the fire alive, it will keep you alive, explained Roz as she dropped another log onto the flames. But be careful, fire can turn deadly in an instant. At dawn, heavy snow was falling again, and there was Roz, setting out from the nest to build a third lodge. She trudged into the great meadow where the fierce winds had created enormous sweeping snowdrifts, but she powered through and finished the job and was soon beginning work on the fourth lodge and then a fifth. The island became a dotted with lodges that all glowed warmly through the long winter nights. And inside each one, animals laughed and shared stories and cheered their good friend Roz. Chapter 57, The Fire. Strange sounds were echoing from the far side of the pond. What started as a low murmur gradually swelled to a chorus of terrified voices. There was an eerie glow that was part of the forest, and a thick plum of smoke began rising up from the snowy treetops. Roz charged across the ice and found the second lodge completely engulfed in raging flame. F frightened animals were running in every direction, fleeing for their lives through the deep snow. What happened, shouted Roz as Broadfoot galloped wildly past. We took too many logs in the fire pit, he said without stopping. The flames climbed up the ceiling. My baby is still in there, cried a mother hare, pointing at the burning lodge. Somebody help, please. Roz didn't hesitate. She plowed through the snow and ducked into the lodge. Flames and smoke were everywhere. A tall stack of logs blazed in the fire pit, and in the far corner, a tiny ball of fur was shaking with fear. Crouching low, the robot wound her way beneath the smoke and around the flames and gently scooped up the young hare. Do not worry, Roz yelled over the roar of the fire. You are going to be okay. She turned to leave, but the doorway had started to crumble. She, so she shielded the hare with her body and smashed right through the walls of the lodge. Sizzling pieces of wood went flying as the robot and the hare burst out into the soft snow. Oh, darling, you're all right, cried the mother hare, pulling her daughter close. Thank you for saving my baby, Roz. Now that everyone was safely away, the robot turned her attention to putting out the fire. Her glowing eyes darted around as she computed a plan. Then, with all of her strength in her legs, Roz launched herself up high into the snowy branches of the nearest pine tree. A moment later, the tree was shaking violently and heaps of snow were sliding from its branches and pouring onto the flames like an avalanche. Steam hissed up through the smothering mound of snow. The flames quickly died, the snow quickly melted, and within minutes, all that remained was a charred foundation of the lodge. Roz dropped down from the tree and then waited as the frightened animals slowly returned. And then she said to them, Would you like another lodge? The animals looked around at one another, unsure of what to do. Understandably, they were afraid of another fire breaking out, but they were more far more afraid of the deadly cold. So they pulled together and worked with Roz and built a bigger, better lodge on top of the old one. It had a taller ceiling and a deeper fire pit, and it was made with more rock and less wood, and it had a supply of water for emergencies. 
but the most important safety feature of this rebuild lodge were the lodgers themselves, who now had a whole new respect for fire.